We're going to talk about pneumonia. I'm sure even before nursing school, you have heard of pneumonia, but a lot of people have some misconceptions. So let's review what it is and how we're actually going to treat it. Pneumonia is an inflammatory process within the lungs that causes the alveoli to fill with fluid or pus. So you can see here how the alveoli have accumulated with fluid. Here would be your healthy alveoli free of fluid, and here would be alveoli with pneumonia with fluid sitting at the bottom. Now, if you remember from our gas exchange lecture, alveoli filled with fluid do not allow for efficient gas exchange. So this is definitely gonna cause some problems. Now, a common misconception about pneumonia is that it's a lung infection. The truth is actually that it can be infectious or non-infectious. If it's infectious, of course, it can either be bacterial or viral of origin. Now, non-infectious pneumonia can come from things like aspiration, uh, where the patient breathes in food or fluid or even vomit, and that fluid gets into the alveoli. Or it can be like post-op pneumonia because patients are drowsy or in pain uh, and they're not taking deep breaths and they're not moving around. So any mucus they have is gonna settle there in the lungs and into the alveoli. Now we can also classify pneumonia by how the patient has contracted it. There's community acquired pneumonia. And so with the community acquired pneumonia, that's when the patient contracts it from someone out in the community. Maybe someone came to work uh, with pneumonia or maybe somebody dropped their uh, child off at daycare uh, who had pneumonia and, and then so people can get it that way. It's acquired out in the community. The other one is hospital acquired immunity, uh, pneumonia. Now this means that the patient came in without pneumonia and developed it during their stay at the hospital. The majority of the time, okay, the majority of the time this is caused by poor hand hygiene. Okay, so poor hand hygiene is one of the main causes of this uh, on the part of the nurses. Now, it could be ventilator-associated pneumonia, or sometimes that'll be referred to as VAP. And you can see sometimes we have to open uh, the tube in order to suction out uh, for the patient, the mucus for the patient. And sometimes we don't do a good enough oral care on these patients. And that bacteria makes its way down the tube, the ET tube, do, 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 do. And that's just a perfect source, a perfect location for uh, pneumonia to, to occur. So again, if the patient aspirates, they can get pneumonia. And it's our job to recognize the, that and the signs of that and to prevent it. Now, we have a lot of interventions we can implement to prevent post-op pneumonia. So we need to make sure we're implementing all of those. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. And then finally, there's something called opportunistic pneumonia. This is occurs in immunocompromised patients. So an organism makes its way into the system and someone like you or I with a normal immune system, we'd be able to easily fight it off. But a patient who has, uh, who's immunocompromised, so let's just say decreased immune system, uh, a patient who's immunocompromised, they're not gonna be able to fight it off. So a good way to think about this is kind of like a thief, okay? This thief sees a purse lying around and just grabs it. It's an easy target. So that's the difference between community acquired, hospital acquired, and opportunistic pneumonia. Now there's a couple ways we can diagnose pneumonia. There's really a couple big ways to diagnose it. The first is gonna be chest X-ray. On the chest X-ray, we're gonna see infiltrates. You can see here uh, on this patient, these infiltrates are just in the right lower lobe. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called a sputum culture. What we do is we have the patient cough up some fl phlegm, okay? Now it must be phlegm, it can't just be saliva. Saliva is not gonna work for this. And they have to do this into a sterile cup, okay? This is a sterile procedure. The, the phlegm must come from uh, the sterile airway and it must get into a sterile cup because that allows us to, to run this procedure. Now, if the patient is intubated, we can suction directly uh, from the tube and obtain our sputum uh, culture that way. Now, this is so important because it's how we identify the organism and it's how we determine if it's infectious. Okay, so it's really important that we get a clean sputum culture to determine 
what organism we're working with. And we also have to do this to determine if it's bacterial or viral. Now then if it's bacterial, we can identify what kind of bacteria it is so that we can treat it with the right antibiotics. The other diagnostic you're gonna see uh, for patients who have pneumonia is actually an ABG. Now, if you remember from the ARDS lecture, or you can go watch the ARDS lecture, that pneumonia is one of the main causes. Now, we know this patient is at risk, so we keep an eye on the PF ratio, again, which we go into uh, in ARDS. So we're going to keep an eye on the PF ratio to monitor for the development of ARDS. So those are really the big things we're going to do for our patients, a chest x-ray, sputum culture, and ABG. When it comes to assessment, you will see some differences and similarities between uh, whether your patient has viral pneumonia or bacterial pneumonia. Now, viral is less severe, okay? Usually the patient is gonna present with a low grade fever and normal to very low elevation uh, in their WBCs. They're gonna have a non-productive cough and the chest X-ray may only show very minimal changes. You might not really see many changes going on uh, with this patient's X-ray. Now, bacterial is much more severe uh, than viral. And this usually comes with a high temperature elevation greater than 101 degrees, and you're gonna see an elevated WBC count. So really the way you can identify these two either on a test or when you're working with uh, uh, patients is you're gonna see non-productive cough with viral, not really an elevation in WBCs, not really an elevation in fever, with bacteria, you're gonna see the fever, you're gonna see the productive cough, you're gonna see the white blood cells elevated. Now with all kinds of pneumonia, you're gonna see a couple things. You're gonna see chills, ronchi, wheezes, and decreased SpO2. So it's important if you, if you see these types of signs and symptoms on a patient that you identify it as pneumonia. Chills, ronchi, wheezes, decreased SpO2. You can identify between viral and bacteria, bacterial based on the, the severity of, of fever, WBCs, um, and even chest x-ray. For therapeutic management, there's a couple very specific medical and nursing interventions that we're going to do. For meds, we're either going to give antibiotics or antivirals, depending on the source, of course. And that's why we're running those sputum cultures initially to try to figure out what it is. All right. We're also gonna give antipyretics. And that's gonna help reduce the fever. And then we can also give analgesics to ease any pain. Okay, that's gonna help with any pain that the patient may be experiencing and to help him try to breathe deeper. Another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give supplemental O2 as needed. And we're also gonna give vaccines. Now all patients should get the flu vaccine. All patients should get the flu vaccine as long as it's indicated. This is so important, especially with our elderly population and our population that's at risk. Then we're going to get fluids and encourage PO intake. We want to try to get them to drink up to three liters per day. What this is going to do is it's going to help to thin out secretions to help them get them out more easily. So we want them to get, to, to get about three liters of fluid a day to help thin out those secretions. As far as nursing care goes, there's a couple things we really need to do. We need to monitor respiratory status. Now, sometimes these patients are really struggling and may need to be intubated. So we need to advocate for them and we need to be there close by them, monitoring them and determining if they're escalating to that level where they need to be intubated. We need to encourage activity, especially after surgery. That will help mobilize the secretions and keep them from getting post-op pneumonia. We should encourage chest expansion exercises like turn, cough, deep breathe, TCD. Uh, you can also say TCDB, turn, cough, deep breathe, uh, and incentive spirometry. Incentive spirometry is uh, the number one intervention you can do as a nurse, and it's something you can even do as a student to uh, help the patient get those deep breaths coming in. Then there's also CPT or chest physiotherapy. You might want to review the lesson on atelectasis to see more about these exercises. And then remember that the number one way to prevent spread of infection is hand hygiene. You should have learned this first semester nursing school. The number one thing you can do to prevent the spread of infection is hand hygiene. It's so important 
And remember, it's the main reason why people get hospital-acquired infections. Now make sure you wash your hands when you go into and out of the room every single time. Now the main nursing priorities for the pneumonia patient are, are fairly obvious. We've got to pay attention to oxygenation, gas exchange, and infection control. These are all very important. Now, when we pay attention to oxygenation and gas exchange, it's because their alveoli are filled with fluid and we're monitoring for ARDS. Infection control is a top priority to prevent pneumonia in the first place or to prevent it from spreading and to treat current infection. Now, make sure you check out the care plan attached to this lesson to see some more specific nursing interventions. All right, so let's recap a little bit. The first thing you need to remember is that pneumonia is an inflammatory process in the lungs that involves fluid or pus filling the alveoli and preventing proper gas exchange. Fluid or pus is preventing proper gas exchange. If it's infection, it's important that we identify the organism so we can treat it with the correct antimicrobials. So do we, do we need antibiotic? Do we need antiviral? How are we gonna treat this? Bacterial pneumonia is more severe than viral pneumonia. Though they have similar symptoms, like the chills, uh, the decreased SpO2, it's important to remember that bacterial is more severe. You will see the common symptoms, the chills, the ronchi, the wheezes, and the decreased SpO2. Now, we're going to treat them with some medications, vaccines, fluids, and movement. So the, vac the medications we're going to give are antibiotics, antipyretics, and analgesics. Now, plus, we make sure they receive their vaccines and encourage fluid intake to help thin out secretions. For nursing care, we're going to make sure we're encouraging chest expansion exercises and we're monitoring their respiratory status. And above all, remember, good hand hygiene can help prevent the spread of pneumonia. You guys, this is so important and pneumonia is, is, a, is a big one and you're gonna see it many times with your patients. So those are the basics of pneumonia. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.